Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about photo studies and why you should be doing them. Uh, photo studies are something that I started doing not too long ago and I find that they've helped me improve my art a significant amount and I think by giving you guys some information about them maybe this is going to help you guys out too if you're just starting out or even if you're a more advanced artist I think this is still going to be something that's really useful for you. And the first thing that we're going to cover is what is a photo study and it is essentially you trying to break down a photograph and creating it one for one on your canvas uh, or as closely as possible. The reason why this is something that I think is really, really helpful is uh, because during the process of studying photos, you're able to actually break down uh, different forms, shapes, colors, or even in like an anatomy, pretty much anything that you really want to work on, you're able to break it down uh, in photographs and you're able to find them in photographs. And this is basically a process where you're kind of studying from real life. And I think that's really useful because um, almost everything that we draw is based on real life. Even in created characters or environments, uh, the lighting and perspective and all of that is still applied based on how we see things in our world. And sometimes you see like those really talented artists who seem to be able to draw anything they want just straight from imagination. And it's just because they've been doing so many studies and they've learned so much about how things look in real life that they're able to then translate it into their drawings and they've stored uh, kind of like a mental library of images and resources that they can use whenever they want and it seems like they're just drawing straight from their imagination when in reality a lot of these people like they actually have a library of information there for them to access so their reference is in a sense just their mind it's always good to remember that anything original that you create is based on a combination of both your imagination as well as your mental library of information and how do we build up a mental library of information that takes us back to doing photo studies? Photo studies are probably the best way to do this because we tend to already have a preconceived concept of how things are supposed to look. And that is the information in our brains. But when you study photographs, sometimes you realize, oh, this is how it's actually supposed to look. And the one that I had in my brain was not actually correct. And the more you study from real life and understand how things work in our world, uh, the more easily you're going to be able to apply these concepts into your own original paintings. Now, the reason I started doing photo studies initially was because uh, I was trying to draw a lot of faces and people and environments just from my imagination. Um, I had a lot of scenarios in my head that I wanted to put onto a canvas. And I always had this vision of where my paintings were supposed to go. And I found at the time, uh, most of my paintings or like almost all of my paintings didn't turn out the way I want them to turn out. Uh, it's like something gets lost in the process and I end up making a lot of mistakes, especially when it comes to like anatomy and faces. So I decided, you know what, no more, we're going to put an end to this. So I started doing uh, some photo studies. And uh, after I think about three months or so, it's actually made a huge difference in the way um, I approach my drawings. And I think drawing from imagination now is generally a lot more comfortable for me. So if you're having uh, similar issues to me, uh, and if there's something that you're painting or drawing that just doesn't look right, uh, if there's something that you're always getting stuck on, then I highly recommend you do some photo studies and uh, try to practice your basic skills. And this is, might seem really boring at first, but trust me, you're going to thank yourself for it because eventually you're going to be able to draw your own characters and your own environments with a lot more confidence than you would otherwise uh, if you hadn't done these studies. And I find most of my reference photos on Pinterest. I like Pinterest a lot because when I click on a photo that inspires me, uh, it then shows me a bunch of other photos that are similar to the one that I clicked on. So. Uh, oftentimes, like I'll find some some pictures that I really like, and then it's gonna show me something that's actually even better, and then I get even more inspired. So uh, Pinterest is pretty awesome for that. I also find a lot of reference photos on Instagram. Uh, it's just very convenient because the search tab is always optimized to you, uh, depending on what posts you like and what posts you save. So it's a pretty fast way to look for some quick inspiration. But I think. Pinterest and you know Google search and all that still has a lot more variety than you can find on Instagram. So definitely explore a little bit uh, and see what you like. In terms of what to look for in your reference photos, I would say uh, tailor it to what you're trying to study. So for example, if you're trying to get a better sense of the anatomy of the face, uh, then I would recommend looking into like portraits, 
from different angles and trying to draw the face from different angles. In that case, uh, lighting and all that other stuff probably wouldn't matter too much. Uh, but if you're trying to study like colors and light and how all that works, then uh, I would look for photos that are like not too filtered, uh, that have pretty natural lighting or strong lighting uh, with vibrant colors. Uh, again, like just you don't want too many like post-production filters on your reference photos because those are not really a good way to gauge how colors and light interact with objects in real life. Yeah, the goal with photo studies is basically to target your weaknesses. So whatever you find you're struggling with a lot, uh, look for it in your photo references. For example, it could be backgrounds, it could be faces, whatever it is that you find yourself getting stuck on and spending the most time on. Even when you're painting or drawing, you could try to time yourself for each section and see what actually takes the longest for you to do and what you have to repeat over and over again. And chances are that is what you are least familiar with. So it would be smart to target these areas. But one thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing these photo studies is to not turn your brain off because uh, it's easy to do so when you have a reference to go back to and you don't need to really think about where things are supposed to go. You don't really need to make anything up, but uh, it's important to study what is actually going on in the photo. So if you're doing anatomy, for example, it's important for you to look at how the different planes of the face catch the light and how the different planes fold into each other. Um, and in, if you're doing like backgrounds or uh, just like environment pieces, you want to look at how light interacts with the environment, how light um, can shift the color of a surface versus when it's in shadow. So that's something to keep in mind uh, is when you're doing these studies, you should be always taking mental notes of what's actually going on so that you can use this information later on when you're eventually going to be moving on to creating your own paintings. And I know a lot of people don't like to do photo studies because it's like it's boring there's no creativity in it and a lot of people like to make their own characters and worlds but if you're somebody who thinks that the characters that you create are not up to par with what you had in mind then this is something that's going to help you like just it's it's a grind sometimes but there is a way to make it fun you know uh, eventually when you get a little bit more comfortable maybe you've been doing studies for months uh, when you're feeling a bit more comfortable you can change the characters you can change things about the environment, you can really inject yourself into these studies and make them your own. And that's kind of like what I'm doing right now is in the original photo, the subject, the girl here was actually facing away from the camera. And I decided that that didn't look as interesting or created like a different mood than what I wanted to convey. So I just turned her around and had her facing uh, towards us, the audience. And uh, I also like decided to change the direction of her head halfway through the painting so that the light actually catches her face. So this is like just kind of like a glimpse into uh, what doing a lot of photo studies can actually do for you and your own creativity. And I know sometimes people think that uh, not having to use any photo references is uh, cool and, uh, <laughs> and more impressive than if you were to use photo references. But uh, I personally would say don't buy into any of that because all of the professional artists use photo references they actually you know all the concept artists that are absolutely amazing at what they do they literally put photos into their paintings like it's no there's no shame in studying from photographs and you sh absolutely should be studying from photographs because at the end of the day uh, it's the people who don't study from real life and shame other people that are the ones that are not going to grow and improve right so Literally just do your thing, man. Just go for it. If you want to improve, this is a great way to do it. Don't listen to the haters. Go get them. I believe in you. Okay, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. I'm also on Patreon if you want access to my brushes and original files. But other than that, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.